Sonic Weekly. We need like that cue. That's what I think is is the drop. Is like Sonic Team. <laughs> it's Sonic Weekly. Something like that. Welcome back to Sonic Weekly. I am one of your hosts, Grant. Thanks for joining us once again. This is a program where, in audio form, we discuss all things related to Sonic the Hedgehog, and we do it once every seven days or so. Sometimes I whisper because I want you to know that I don't want my neighbors to know. (laughs) Hey, Bo is out this week, but in his place is the director of our post-production, aka our editor and fill-in host, sometimes host, We're always happy when he's here. It's Smoothies. Hi, Smoothies. Hi, it's Smoothies. Welcome to Smoothies Weekly, where we talk about smoothies and everything adjacent to smoothies. I'm your host, Smoothies. And here he is out of the shadows, stepping onto the the main stage in the center spotlight with a drum roll. It's David the Lurker. Hi, David. Whoa. Hi, Grant. Hi, Smoothies. Yes. And hi, Bo, wherever you are. He's probably out having fun. He's being a family man, Uh, you know, just like that show or movie or book with a similar title you know i always forget there's a lot of a lot of media out there with the word family Mm -hmm. but before i try to index everything with the word family in the title including family matters i should throw it back to grant because whoa we're not alone we're not alone family matters (laughs) we could break it down in a number of ways i mean that is it but we're not going to (laughs) it's the great thing about this show is it's like jazz it's the things we don't talk about that keeps you engaged and we are excited to have uh, our guest return to the show. Uh, she's a comedian, she's a writer, and she's our friend. Abby Denton is back. Hi, Abby. Abby the Human. Yeah, Abby uh, the Human. Is the naming convention of this series. How did this happen? How did before the podcast we started, you were super like loud, right? And then dude. now we started the podcast, <laughs> and it's like you're like a mouse inside a tomato soup can. Oh well, I, f- I figured out how to change my input. Okay, how oh. how about now? Is this <laughs> oh, a there good, we go. a happy that, medium? That's yeah. great. That's yeah. the Abby I know. Okay, let's Perfect. we're gonna Perfect. well let's redo that. Uh, oh dear. Or or you know what? Let's let's keep it all. This this keep is cool. <laughs> this is little little uh, cinema verite for the uh, podcast listener. Uh, so okay, we have news to cover as we do each week uh, for Sonic the Hedgehog, and this was a busy week of Sonic. David, can you uh, lead us into a discussion of? What whatever happened? Sonic Rumble. Right. Yeah, yeah. That that I guess that's our top story this week. This is what you you tune in for. Sega decided that we needed another Sonic the Hedgehog game. This time on iOS and Android devices. That's right. It's mm. mobile only. So everyone who got mad about Dream Team, you should continue doing that. Uh except it's 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 not as big of a deal, but still a big deal. I don't know. Sonic Rumble. It's like Fall Guys, but with Sonic. <laughs> it's uh 32 competitive players trying to to get to the end and there's like a million sonic characters in the video most a lot of them seem to be they they look like sonic forces created characters like off to the side but you've got the big ones yeah every named character looks like they're in there yeah uh if they've got a name and they've been in a game think they're in there plus all the forces ones one the trailer i don't know if you saw if you saw the trailer if you didn't uh one thing to look for when you do watch the trailer is the frame rate which is <laughs> skipping the whole time the whole time in this trailer uh it is running at like a, a a buttery you know 12 frames per second with some occasional dips in there it's a, it gets a bit slideshowy at times there's i saw a gif too of like tracking blaze the cat's movement where she's like kind of like jittering and like warping in odd, strange ways. The art style is interesting as well because it's basically classic Shadow and classic these characters, even though they've sort of before been like, no, no, there's no such thing as classic Shadow. Classic Shadow comes later. Classic Sonic can wear a Shadow hoodie, but classic Shadow doesn't. But but here it's like they're toys. Eggman has created a toy universe. Similar to Sonic Dream Team, where Eggman created a dream universe. Is, is that the? Pl- is there a plot? I didn't realize there was an actual plot to this game. Well, you have to spend several hundred dollars of the game currency to unlock the plot, I believe. Oh, okay. Mobile games, <laughs> Microtransaction so for the right, story. Yeah. If there's suddenly a plot, I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's uh, let's jump all in. But oh yeah, uh, every word of it's canon. If if you don't <laughs> if you don't buy Dream Team, you won't understand any Sonic. <laughs> I, I am I am very much enjoying listening to you both describing these characters as Sonic Forces characters. I, I like to imagine someone 
who, who loves Sonic games, but has never really encountered the internet before seeing furries for the first time and being like, look at all those Sonic Forces creative characters. <laughs> oh, okay. What a great bunch. I didn't know they had conventions for that game. I thought everyone hated it. What if they'd never heard of the game at all and they just they're like misinterpreting it altogether of like Sonic Forces characters to do what? What is he forcing characters <laughs> to do? To rumble? Why? They, they are what does rumbling. that mean? Right. How many Sonic the Hedgehog game titles are also complete sentences? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sonic Forces is the only right. one. Sonic Sonic Rush. Yeah. Yeah, he rushes mm. Sonic rushes to the poles. Ooh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> right. I believe uh what John Kerry <laughs> said that famous. <laughs> Hey, speaking of politics, actually, the other big story with Sonic Rumble uh-huh. is the uh, once again uh, attempt by uh, a <laughs> Sonic related project to launch a Discord server. Yeah, it was it was uh, I don't know the details. My sense of it is that small mod team, lots of people. It was basically I'm not saying it was the campus protests playing out on discord in a sonic server but i do think the mods maybe overreacted and we're starting to do bands and then we're double downing doubling down on bands but at the same time maybe the people that were complaining about it on twitter uh listen i'm not gonna both sides the thing it sounds like it was a disaster uh but i don't know i wasn't there specifically so reports are coming in right that the mods were behaving aggressively against people that were like saying trans rights or free Palestine. And then they were like, well, Hey, that's political. So that goes into off topic. And then people were like, so you're, you're segregating us to off topic. And then I think just caught in that rhetoric trap, rhetorical trap, uh, the thing imploded. What was the thread that they did want to talk about these things? If it wasn't like, like what is the sonic on topic? Right. Subject where that would come up. I uh-huh. guess the frame rate, because there's not much else to talk about. There are the Sonic. If you could sign up to be a beta tester. Yes. But there's no. We don't know what that means. Um, I guess you get to try it out, so they can uh, work out all the issues with, like, oh, if round one everyone's laggy and jumping around like they were in the trailer, then maybe they'll fix it. I don't know if they'll fix it. Uh, yeah, I saw people talking about the discord and because sometimes i i like watching a mess uh i went to try and join the server before the call started but they have locked the server down no one can join if they aren't already in there so i wouldn't be surprised if like nobody can say anything at all in there at the moment it looks like there's like four thousand people in there and if they only have like five mods yeah they're being eaten alive like limb from limb they don't have limbs they're they're limbless now they're barely humans is is what i think yeah it's happening i don't know yeah it's just like with the the sonic when the sonic movie discord opened big mess and then eventually it settles down or when the ken penders discord opened oh well that lasted less than 24 hours didn't it? yes uh kind of miss it don't you maybe they should stop doing this I don't know. uh yeah, yeah if, well if... sonic fans are always going to tear things limb from limb because the limbs aren't the color that they want them to be <laughs> as i understand it <laughs> uh, i mean if this was connected to hard light they already have a, a server open where they where they chat right uh sonic rumble which is of course it was leaked before sonic toy party no longer toy story themed but still toys in the game uh it looks it's being head up by rovio yeah the angry birds um rovio the famous supreme court case yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) and and, um right there's a part of me that wonders if this was supposed to be an angry birds game and then once they got bought by sonic or sega they reskinned it Uh Hmm. angry birds fall guys become sonic fall guys right i have no no proof i have no rumors i'm just wondering if that's the you're just talking shit i am just talking shit so am i i mean i'm regretting everything (laughs) i said you know uh but i do want to make clear that uh you know though i'm somewhat sympathetic to the mods plight uh never on the mod side fuck the mods (laughs) we're sort of mods of our own server and still fuck us too like uh like it's it's a it's a it's a bad look (laughs) all mods are bastards and maybe AM. Yeah, A M A B, a Mab, a Mab. That's the only meaning that that has. I'm a Mab. <laughs> uh, Smoothies, are you excited to play this game? Did you register to be a beta tester? 
No, um, <laughs> I'm, an, I'm an alpha tester all the way. <laughs> oh, I think we got to add the air horn for that, but <laughs> still like off to the just a kind of a sad air horn. Just in the left channel. Yeah, uh. <laughs> it, the, the trailer starts off with like some amiibo looking figurines. Like, are we going to start getting some like little physical trophy type figures? Because we do have those new like the Japanese um, Sonic, Sonic TikTok has right, like the Sonic these, and Friends, uh, the Sonic and Friends toys. Mm-hmm. Like I was expecting those toys in here since it was originally going to be called toy something. And um, no, not the case. So I'm confused. Yeah. Big kind of looks like Sonic Prime big to me in his face. Yeah. And also the fact that Eggman is just running around on his little pudgy legs instead of being in like an Eggmobile. Yeah. It it looks weird, but I like it. It's funny. <laughs> Abby, how familiar are you with uh, Sonic Rumble? Did you see the trailer? Does any of this make sense? Oh, absolutely. I've been following the Rumble franchise uh, since I believe it was uh, 2001 with the release of Digimon Rumble Arena. Oh. <laughs> which, which, again, took a very toyetic, simplified approach on the PlayStation uh, graphics uh, to bring to life the idea of... Um, you know, sort of digital monsters interacting with each other in the real world. You know, in, in many ways, Sonic as a franchise, as I understand it, Frontiers was really finally breaking down that all video game characters are digital monsters <laughs> and, yeah. and Sonic m- more than most. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I think this is finally bringing the Rumble franchise full circle. Wow. I, I'm stoked about it. So so the what, what, toy, there was a Toy Story. It was it was build as it was going to be a tie-in for toy story i never heard that that's great <laughs> the the logo for sonic toy party was clearly just the toy story logo but with the sonic logo on top of it that's delightful uh yes i'm 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 assuming it must have been like oh we're just having fun internally because that was never meant to be seen yes by uh, anyone outside of sega disappointed, disappointed. yeah yeah Okay. I guess the Sonic logo classically also has a like the Toy Story like a, it's one primary color with an outline of a different primary color that's like well yeah and the hedgehog used to be in red so like it used to be all three it's perfect yeah wow this is the nineties it was will this game bring us back to the nineties no oh <laughs> <laughs> why not yeah, actually on on that on that subject is Angry Birds over I feel like I haven't heard of Angry Birds in a while. Uh, um, have people sort of lost interest in Angry Birds or is there like a cartoon that I've not heard of? Angry that's... Birds is still making a lot of money as far as I know. Huh. It, I think it, there are cartoons. I think there's been more movies than we think. I only knew there was one movie. Well, huh? there were two I movies. I think there's six movies. Six? My goodness. Yeah. I thought there were two movies. Uh, two years ago, Angry Birds generated 317 million euros in revenue. And that was just two years ago. Okay. Is is it a European franchise? I, I didn't know. Yeah. To be mentioned. Yeah. I, I'm being informed about this Eggman creating a toy world thing that you mentioned, Grant. I'm I'm getting it uh oh. funneled into my ear. Like it, it is on the the Sega press release. I'm glad yeah, you're getting it from the press release. You don't want to get it from the gutter from the kids at school. You want to get it no. right from the horse's mouth. The upcoming Sonic Mobile game invites players to enter a twisted toy world created by the notorious Dr. Eggman. Apparently, Notorious Violent J and Shaggy Too Dope. <laughs> yes. It was briefly on their website. They they took they might have taken mention of the story off the website, but I guess the website's kind of focusing on hey, apply to beta test, play game. We like Sonic. Look, look Sonic. He's... I think it could be fun. This is something that I have been wanting for a while. A way to play Sonic with friends online. That sounds fun. It's an action game. They in probably in the press release, I think they make note of like it's the first multiplayer online action, not just racing game. I just think the trailer was really weird and and strange. And I I personally I don't want to tell anyone how to do anything. I don't know anything. I just might not have kept in the shots. The frame rate was skipping in the trailer. I might have cut that out. Do you think maybe that that illustrated? I, I don't know what rollback netcode is. I hear people talk about it as an important thing. Do you think that was meant to indicate that 
you know, even even if your phone sucks, you can play this game and, <laughs> and you'll you'll keep up with your friends like the Yeah, it's relatable. Maybe because like everybody like can relate to like games not quite working. So it's just sort of being honest that it's uh it's four stars. It's not five stars. They're going for that. Um that reference is brought to you by the uh show Girls Five Eva, which I've been watching. I mentioned the other week. They make that same exact comparison and they do it in song form. Ooh, song form. All right. I've been meaning to watch that show, but I haven't yet because it does star Sarah Rellis, who right. I enjoy as a musician. She's great. It's so funny. Uh, yeah, it's the same like writers and producer crew of like 30 Rock and Kimmy Schmidt, but like kind of funnier and kind of like oh man you're shit talking kimmy schmidt we we got this on record no i like kimmy schmidt <laughs> i'm just saying like this one might be even better oh okay. okay anyway so sonic rumble is maybe just coming out of the gate saying manage your expectations so do you think that means that all the other footage that they had to, to work with to cut into this into this trailer was worse or do you think that this is a situation where they had much better smoother uh footage to use but it's like a have you ever seen that film the producers right yeah yeah as i understand it uh the entire entertainment industry at the moment is operating on the premise that you can make a lot more money with a a tax write-off than you can with a a big hit (laughs) (laughs) that's true you can get a raise of like 27 million dollars if you do that that's true mr zasloff if you were a dishonest person assume away (laughs) Smoothies, uh, you edit, right? You are an editor. Yeah. What, what, uh, what would you say to, to that? What do you think? Oh, what I would say is, um, so what you guys need to do is uh, fake some footage. Oh, wow. And we'll, we'll, we'll lie to the public. Oh, man. And uh, oh. we'll make the game look better than it is. So the anti-smoothies is like, no, we're going to go and we're going to be honest. <laughs> we are going to be truthful truth in advertising we are going to say exactly what we can do and we can provide a relatively what's your definition of stable <laughs> i would say it turns on <laughs> it doesn't look good but it works yeah <laughs> yeah i mean most games don't work anymore right like you can't turn them on you have to wait the day one patch if you try to start it beforehand yeah we're not even on day one that's an excellent point <laughs> what was the name of that one uh tony hawk game where like on the disc itself it, there's just like a broken test level and you have to actually install everything that's from a patch. so awful i can't remember the name of it uh offhand it's of course not pro skater or the recent remake that We'll never get a sequel to because wasn't that studio shunted off? To... Is it Thug Tony Hawk's Underground? Was that the one? Uh, it it might have been one of the undergrounds. Uh, huh. Do you, do you guys remember when we got the leaks for this game and we had so much more footage from the leaks than we did in this ad? <laughs> it's true. It also looked that that is true. There, there weren't as uh. The, the same variety of characters that we didn't see pirate sonic we didn't see pirate shadow True. Mm. which of course True. neither of them are in sonic prime which had a pirate world uh they, <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't know if if these pirate characters are in sonic dash or sonic forces speed battle because i i don't pay super close attention anymore to the 10 million new costumes that show up in, in that game no no okay all right, are are you caught up on Speed Battle? Have you unlocked everything, Smoothies? No, I I genuinely gave it like a a good effort, and yeah, I just can't. It was the same here. Like it's fun for for a moment in time, and then you're like, yeah. actually, I have to play this every day for an hour if I if I want to unlock everything, yeah. and it's too much <laughs> too much time to invest unlocking those uh, chests that were, well, were you got to pay to get that stuff. Oh, right. Ah, uh, right, right. All right. The last time I opened it up, it was like, hey, do you want to pay for this chest that you or these cards when you played last time? And I was like, oh, no, and turned it off again. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure none of that will be in Sonic Rumble, right? Here, Here's yeah. my pitch for the Sonic Rumble trailer. Okay. All right. It's, okay. you know, we've got decades now of the, you know, the fans doing fan games at Sega. You know, they, they're they're aware of, you know, they they they'll. They'll headhunt 
You know, mm-hmm. this 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 is this is a company that understands the power of the fans. And so here you do the same trailer. And then you do like a like a Toy Story kind of a bit where you cut to like the the kids playing with these toys. And and you know, they love introducing new characters that, you know, will be gods or incredibly powerful people who will then never appear again in the franchise. So, you know, the new gods in this case, we could call them Orion and Scott Free, just off the top of my head. Right. <laughs> um and and they're playing with their sonic toys in their like god bedroom and 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 you see the footage of the bad frame rate and they're like man it's too hard to make a sonic game that's good and and then they're using their toys to like like imagine mm. imagine a game mm. that it's the sonic game in your head instead of the the one that sega won't have enough time to really conclude yeah <laughs> you know it's right. it's it, it and then the tagline is just sonic rumble imagine you're playing this it's better than <laughs> whatever we can make and yeah. it's like a like a pay on to human creativity you yeah. know and wow. and and then and then at the end like you'll, you'll see a, you'll see footage of all the all the programmers and all the business executives just sadly walking out of of their offices and it, it looks bleak it's like oh all these men have been <laughs> laid off but then there are rainbows overhead and they look up at the sky and they're like the beauty of nature. We're we're free from toil. Oh. <laughs> we, Sonic Rumble. Yeah, you see, like free like Yuji Naka gets a job. Um, you know, maybe his dream job is he's 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 like an engineer on a train, and he pulls the little steam bell, and he's like, "This is better. This is better than making Sonic because we free your imaginations." That's so. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, uh, great pitch. Very artistic. That's. Uh, it's essentially a Toy Story film. That's beautiful. Um, I, don't, I don't know why people don't hire me to make trailers for their video games. They might pay you. They might pay you like uh, 50 bucks. Yeah, They'll pay me like, not to make this trailer and you. to get far away from them. <laughs> I'm still waiting for Lumina to, to pay off. And that green, what was the green guy in that game? He was cool. Oh, uh, cool. yeah. You're talking about Blue Sonic green. Shuffle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, so many this? lore implications that no one will ever follow up on. That's right. Uh, smoothies uh, followed up on this. Right. It's true. Uh, Thank you, smoothies. To, to some, I was about, I was about to say, like, wait, what is his name? I wanted to say Cosmo, but I'm like, that's no, really Cosmo so wrong. sounds. Was that the the cartoon had a Cosmo that was? It looked it was like, Cosmo but it wasn't and Wanda. white. No. Is that uh, right? Oh, there's Lumina Flow Light and Illumina. And then the the green one. Illumina gets split into two personalities, uh, like a light side and a dark side. And I forget the dark side's name. Yeah, yeah, it, it's funny, isn't it? We've all forgotten Iblis. Ib- no. Iblis. We've all forgotten his name. Void. <laughs> Ryan right. and Scott ah. Free. Yes, Void. It's a very forgettable name. And Illumina, Flowlight, and also Knights is briefly in that game. If you play it, what on April first or something? Um, yeah, Sonic shuffle uh abby have you played a lot of sonic shuffle i'm ashamed to admit that that's the party game i've spent the most time with in my life wow <laughs> in that era of board games i guess dokopan kingdom is up there but um mm, wow we're gonna bring the air horn back right. out for this one in the, <laughs> the one in the corner these are games mainly for people who either hate themselves or their families uh, and i am fortunate <laughs> to say i am i am in that number if any of you ever want to play it with me uh you just have to promise uh, you won't bear any grudges, you know. We'll we'll get drunk enough not to remember. Are you? Uh, so you're you're good at the game because I I the, oh no <laughs> no you're not good at it. You just like the the mini games. The it had bright game. oh no <laughs> no no, oh, okay, no it no. had bright colors and it had oh, Sonic the Hedgehog in it and yeah. I was a child and and those are the oh, three sure. the three uh, essential components of having a good time with Sonic Shuffle. Um, yeah. I don't recall a smile cracking my face at all, but I, you know, I was dedicated. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, okay. Okay. So you, you are admitting that at some point you were a child. On the record. You weren't fully formed, adult, appeared one day. You know, I, I, I was very free with the information that I was once a child, but now the fact that you've, you've, <laughs> you've asked me <laughs> whether I stand by this, I, I'm now very concerned <laughs> about the implications that may be involved here. See, I've always said this, David. You have a gift. Right, you I have can... a gift for asking questions in the most like <laughs> disturbingly right. When uh, when Bo comes back, you should ask him, uh, you know, about that bank robbery that happened during the hour that he wasn't available to record this podcast. <laughs> well, you know, when he comes back and is like, "I am now independently wealthy," we'll 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 know what happened. <laughs> he won the lottery. 
Uh, <laughs> there, there was a stand-up out in out in L.A. named Chris. I don't remember his surname, and he's Thorndike. He's the the last I heard of him. The most specific I could hear was he's doing his own thing, <laughs> which is quite a euphemism for he's not doing stand-up anymore. Uh, but he'd he'd come out of prison after like ten years, served for uh, robbing banks. Oh. And he was just a big time bank robber. And I feel like the fact that that guy didn't have a long and fruitful career just doing stand up about bank robbery. I just cut back from the bank and boy, are my arms tired. Yeah. <laughs> 10 years ago, huh? I wonder if we went to some of the same open mics. Maybe we were at the same, you know, maybe I know. I don't know. Right. Maybe you went to some of the same robberies as him. Well, he, he was in prison for however long. And then I think the last time I saw him was sort of a little before COVID. So. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. So he stopped doing stand up because of the bank. He started doing it after he got out of prison. After he got after out. Oh. He robbed the banks first and then he went to prison. Okay. So uh-huh. Okay, th- this is very clear. He didn't get out of prison and then think, "Well, I've served my debt to society. I might as well now stop robbing banks." No, it was bank robbery first, bank then robbery. prison, then, then stand up. And then uh-huh. I believe he so the back of my head is trying to remember, and I, I want to say he now does commentary over pornography, but that oh, sounds yeah. like a nonsense job. But I also no. have a friend who is a veterinary dentist, which I also had filed away <laughs> as, oh, you must have heard that wrong. <laughs> oh. I'd asked him yeah, what he did again that. about three times in a row every time I saw him. Yeah. So yeah, I brush dog's teeth. You know, maybe you need commentary checks. Maybe it's for the, you, you know, audio visual. Oh, right. you know, like. Oh, know. the the the, the vision impaired. Yeah, uh, right. Forget what you call them. Do you think they use a lot of like baseball metaphors? Probably right. And but like they like like all right, here we are back at the uh, bottom of the fourth. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's been a long long day. It's been a, everyone's tired. Everyone just wants to go home. I think I think that's the best way to do it. I feel like every um, vision impaired track I've ever heard. Like the the way that it it would go for pornography is just, and now they are having sex. <laughs> wow! And then you could just put that in a loop for about I don't know how long pornography is an hour. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I guess it depends. See, when you said commentary, you I was it, like, I right? Because I was just thinking about like the, there was an infamous series of of pornographic films uh, directed by somebody. I think his name was Axel Brom because he was doing ones based on dc and marvel properties Mm. and like the first one he did was a very authentic 1960s batman porn parody it was like wow these costumes look good they're they're acting on their acting's on point like it's very weird oh but in the middle i guess they're gonna have sex i'll just fast forward through that to get to the next scene (laughs) Uh, and then like he went on to do a, a whole series of like oh we're doing superman and it's based on the 70s film but we're then we're going to do a sequel that's sort of the man of steel tone but it was before man of steel was released and Uh. like he continued to make these movies that tied into each other and arguably may have been a better a more authentic (laughs) dc universe experience than the (laughs) Zack snyder films and the and the dc eu that existed um is someone running that wiki I don't know. Is someone at one point Supergirl is yeah. dating Lex Luthor, which is sort of like an interesting like That's and Lex Luthor is canon. She did in the early nineties. That's right. Matrix right. Supergirl. Yes, she did, and and well, also best Supergirl. No one remembers her, but she's the best one. She right. I mean, she's in the Death and Return storyline. So even if people are like, it's the only story I'm going to read, like she is there. They might get confused when she gets hit by Doomsday and becomes a big plink blob. But like, yeah, you know, because she was introduced at the very end of Burns tenure of superman and then was like uh, a vital character that exists like she like oh what i'm saying is you should read late 80s and early 90s superman right because you know recently they did announce a new the the triangle arrow omnibus volume one which is very exciting to me uh and and they're also going to be reprinting the superman exile and other stories omnibus exile being you know even though it does start with it's the aftermath of something that superman probably shouldn't do because he uh, spoilers he kills three kryptonian villains using kryptonite in a pocket universe where the matrix supergirl comes from he actually like suffers mentally from this and exiles himself into space to to deal with that 
And like it, it, it's a it's a really good story coming from something that probably shouldn't have happened in the first place. And it's like, wow, at the end of Man of Steel, the movie, he does end up killing Zod. Spoilers. It's a decade old. And it's like, wow, are they going to do something in the vein of exile? Maybe this is going to go somewhere. And the answer was no. Mm. Superman didn't care that he killed someone because that movie ends with jokes. <laughs> like, man, yeah, Man of Steel is so somber and sad. And then after he kills Zod, he's making jokes. <laughs> and and there's the military lady who's like, wow, he's hot. And I'm yeah. like, you were afraid to say Superman during this whole movie. <laughs> and now you have this, this random woman being like, wow, he's so sexy. And he's like, yeah, he snapped a man's neck like a minute ago. <laughs> and before that, he was making out on the ashes of thousands of people. Thousands <laughs> have died. And Lois Lane is making a joke about kissing him. <laughs> Do you think the studio note there was like, oh, so after Superman kills that guy, the audiences mm -hmm. aren't on his side anymore. And they were like, well, then we'd, we'd better make, make a lot of jokes so people <laughs> like him. Right. Yeah, it's like we found that uh, audience scores, they say the likability goes down when he snaps the guy's neck. <laughs> but don't the, the pun brings him right back. <laughs> uh, I, I will say there are good things in all of those movies, but in general... Yeah. I have I have I have strong issues. Yeah. Hey, speaking of I, well, so Superman, what do you freaking think? Because the, this week, the James Gunn version, we saw the suit revealing mm -hmm. a sort of a poster, not really a poster, just sort of an image. I, I think it was Dan Scotty who pointed out that um, I've only seen his name over text. Uh, who pointed out that it, it's like one of the only poses you could put Superman in where. You can't quite tell if he's got the briefs or like shorts or anything, mm -hmm. which I know a lot of people have very strong feelings about. <laughs> and, and yeah, that was a good observation. I guess they, they want to to save that. I, I mean, to be fair, the very first uh, Man of Steel teaser where Superman was like, oh, hey, or the that first photo where he's in front of the bank vault, where you're like, oh, did he stop a bank robbery? No, he didn't. He got hit into it. It's fine. <laughs> um, he's also in a position where you can't quite tell what's going on in the trunk area. And I, and I it's like, huh. but, but uh, people have like zoomed in and done some color, like brightening. And it seems there's a little bit of red in between Yay. those legs. And, and know, I'm excited about that. You know why they do this? You know why they put the shadows there? Why they don't make like a, a firm decision on the trunks. You know why? They want a little wiggle room. Hey. <laughs> oh, where's the little air horn? <laughs> little air horn. It seemed more like a a rim shot to me. Yeah. <laughs> little rim yeah. shot. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a rim wiggle shot room. Joke. Little yeah. uh little, want little... a little wiggle room on that decision. Right. So that that's when you, you grab the boom mic, you pull it down, you tap on it. You're like, is this thing on? Folks, then folks. the audience laughs and you become the king of late night <laughs> for 30 years. <laughs> We're the jokers. Talking of superhero movies, have, has anyone here seen Madam Web? I haven't, <laughs> not, I haven't gotten yet. to unburden no. myself with, with the knowledge of Madam Web. I wow. fell out of my chair laughing. It's one of the greatest cinematic experiences I've ever had. Oh, wow. So we should see it. Right. I, yeah. I genuinely it's Netflix think soon. It's, it's worth a watch. Like, I've been wanting, the, I've been the wanting fact to that they it. kept going back reshoots re-editing so many times and like her powers are also like meta textually film editing like she'll she'll have a vision of the future and be like oh let's do this instead like like she can cut you know in a in a filmic way that i don't know if they were necessarily cognizant of but in a way that produces a very funny movie <sighs> like there are there are bits where like it's clear at some point she has a vision and changes her mind, but they cut out the vision because it, you know, it was too slow for the moment <laughs> or something. Oh. And so, like, there's a bit where she's abducted these children, and she's like, oh. "If you want to leave, you can leave any time." And one of the kids is like, "All right, then I'm going to leave." And then she locks the car doors so they can't get out. <laughs> Just like an abrupt, complete change. That sounds like a good where movie. I fell out of my chair. It, it's great. And so, smoothies. I would, as an editor, I would like hear her thoughts specifically if you've seen it. Yeah, oh, wow. it's the perfect movie. All right, I, I have it on the on the queue. Right, I gotta, yeah, but I haven't I haven't pulled the trigger yet because, like, 
I watched Morbius. David and I watched Morbius together. Ooh. That's right. How was it? It was so boring. It wasn't even so bad it's good. It was just... Oh. Madam Web does not have that problem, I assure oh, you. Oh, good. Thank God. Masterful movie. So it's better. Right. Okay. So if you were to make a tier list of the so the Sony Spider-Man spin-off cinematic universe, which I guess is what? Two Venom films, Madam Web, Morbius, and... Is that it? Uh something like that. Yeah. Oh, I think remember. there's a they announced a Craven, I think. The Craven right. poster. You can rank right. the Craven poster. Yeah. Right. Three of those movies are coming out this year. Madam Web already came out, Venom 3 is coming out, and Craven the Hunter. So that's that's a, a three three pronged something. That's like a, a plug. A a socket and a plug in you the can US. Say it. It's an assault. I would <laughs> say it's an assault. <laughs> right. I'm just I don't know. Like, I'm sure they're all bad, but there's something good about bad. Um, I don't know. It's great. Like, the fact <laughs> that they can't use Spider-Man makes it even better because um, in Madam Web, her best friend is is Uncle Ben. Adam Scott plays Ben Parker. Mm. Youngish Ben Parker. Oh, OK. Before before getting shot. Yeah, yeah. We, we were walking out of the theater and I was like, so what did you think of Uncle Ben in that movie? And she was like, my, to my girlfriend, she was like, that, that was Uncle Ben. She she didn't didn't pick up on that at all because they couldn't be too explicit, even though like it ends with Peter Parker getting born. And Madam Webb is like, I could tell this kid's going to be important. Oh, oh just, wow. It's, it's incredible. And someone told me that Dakota Johnson's whole thing in interviews is just to be like off putting and like make the interviewer uncomfortable. Yeah. Wow. And great. that's absolutely, they've leaned into it masterfully with Madam Webb because the character, <laughs> like she's at a baby shower at one point, everyone's meant to put like baby name ideas into a hat and they're just pulling out, pulling out all the names and saying, Oh, who suggested this one? Tiffany. That's a great name. And and Madam Webb, for some reason, has just put a blank piece of paper in it. And they're like, why did you do this and not just not put the paper in? And she's like, well, my mama died when I was a child. And so I don't really like thinking about it. like it's, it's just a woman who's dedicated to making everyone around her. She just performs this visceral discomfort around the children wow. that she has to look after. It's. <laughs> it's incredible i've never seen a movie that was just like this woman hates children no wow love it okay she sounds like me yeah. oh wow does that mean you also starred in 50 shades of gray yes and <laughs> i had a great time right oh my god like i'm just fascinated by 50 shades of gray because of it originated as a fanfic yeah and then somehow that's right oh, yeah it was a terrible twilight fanfic that mm -hmm. became something everyone's mother read uh i have I, I i think i watched the first one i can't remember if i watched the other two um but there's a part of me that wants to watch the movie what, what's it called book club where it's about a bunch of elderly women reading 50 shades of gray and being like oh that's so spicy that's lovely yeah that sounds cute. right is diane keaton in that movie uh mm. it seems like a, a something that she would just pop up in sounds right yeah I think book club, the movie. Yeah, here we go. We got, we got Diane Keaton, Jane Fonda, Candace, Candace Bergen. That's how you say her last name, right? And, and I don't know who this other person, Mary Steenberg. I'm actually not sure who that is. Yes. She, oh, wasn't whoa, she the, whoa. the lady yes, on you. Back to the Future 3? Oh, uh, yeah. Sad. Am I remembering that She's right? in other things. Well, I'm just like offhand. I can't think of who she is, but if I click her name, if I click the name, let me see. Oh, yeah, I, I definitely know who that is. Uh, <laughs> I I just didn't know that was her name. Oh, man, she she uh, won an Emmy Award for The Attic, The Hiding of Anne Frank from 1988. Um, did, did you know Sonic? Gonna, uh, <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, I actually have a question. We, OK, no. Uh, yeah, welcome yeah. back to Sonic Weekly. What, the fuck? <laughs> what movies do you think? Someone could tell you it was based on Sonic the Hedgehog fan fiction and you'd believe them coming off of Fifty Shades of Grey. Like, mm, like yeah. The Force Awakens. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know if J.J. Abrams knows what Sonic is. I feel like it would have just completely passed over him. It's too late. He's all about 80s movies. So I yeah. don't know if he would, uh, if it would click. Um, I think Sonic the Hedgehog 2 yeah. <laughs> is someone's fanfic. <laughs> was inspired by 
Sonic. I think you can see it if you look. Right. There's Tails and Knuckles and Sonic and Eggman and the Chaos Emeralds and the name of the movie is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. It's right, it's right in the name. I, I There's got to be. I mean, because there's shows that clearly have homages, you know, or references. Okay, okay, go. Let's be heroes. Has an episode with Sonic in it. It wears its Sonic love in a shirt. Am Amphibi, Amphibi. I was. I'm gonna say it wrong. Amphibia. Amphibia. I was just gonna say amphibian, but I'm like, there's a, there's something different. It's amphibia. You know, there's there's a couple of winks and nods to Sonic in that, but I wouldn't. I don't think it's a Sonic fan fiction unless it is. We should have asked. Dragon Ball is Sonic is the fan fiction of Dragon Ball, right? Okay, we could. Fair, fair, yeah. Fair. I, I guess amphibia, it would be hard to bring in too much from Sonic because, you know, if you're amphibious, you, you, can, you can swim. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Sonic the Hedgehog just can't figure it out. He's had 30 years. And it's not as though he hasn't had chances to learn. Like, it's not, it's not like he's a landlocked creature. He, he lives near water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's just, there's never been a point where he's like, well, I'm always in death defying situations involving water. I, I should yeah. learn how to swim. He j- it, it's never crossed his mind. And I don't know what the, the situation is with that. Yeah. Like at some point you would think it would occur to him. Do you think Sonic's ever had a brain worm? <laughs> I, I think Sonic's brain worm probably has a name and like a unique <laughs> feature design. <laughs> Bernie the brain worm. Uh, hey, not Bernie. Uh, yeah, too political. <laughs> yeah, some other B name. Bobby. 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 Right. All right. Abby, I want to ask you a very open-ended question, which is just what's on your mind with Sonic? Do you have any Sonic? Uh... You've been on the Sonic podcasting circuit. That's because you've got some ideas about Sonic. I mean, I don't know how many Sonic podcasts. I, I, I have on. a number of ideas about Sonic. I have a number of ideas about Sonic. Uh, uh-huh. Many of them too. Too, ra- too radical. Too personal. Too controversial. To yeah. Okay. Oh, too personal. Yeah. What does Sonic the Hedgehog mean to you? You know, it, it's interesting you say that because I've been thinking about it a lot because I've got a, a, a small child in my extended family now you know the, the, similar to how i was asking about angry birds earlier you know you 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 reach a point where you don't mm-hmm. you know you, you might be aware of the things that the children are interested in but it you know it's you, you can't go back and figure out why they think bakugan toy designs are good like they're just not <laughs> you know they're, they're like if the beast box people stop trying you know and and similarly uh, i you know, Angry Birds just passed over me. I've never had a, a phone that that worked reliably. Uh, I, d- I don't I don't know what an Angry Bird is. And so it it's hard for me to really get to grips with what this two year old is interested in. And I remember when I was a child, my mom would always come home. This is the tie in. My mom would always come home. She'd be like, oh, I saw I saw there was a Sonic the Hedgehog toy at the store. And I, you know, I, I would be confused like it's not like she bought it for me she was just telling me that she saw the the image of yeah. sonic the hedgehog as if he were some sort of a sacred icon to me uh, and, and just yeah. wanted to share this information with me and sort of the older people at my church would be like oh you you know the, the, i saw a care bear at the store the other day this this is not i don't know what you want me to do with this information yeah you know i i am eight right do you have an allowance Start saving up. But, you know, now that I am older, I, you know, I'll be trying to interest this two year old. And I'll be like, oh, I saw a Sonic the Hedgehog thing the other day. Yeah. You know, and I've, I've sort of, I now understand that it's because you can't, you can't transcend the, the barriers between the generations. You, you need to cross that gap somehow. And so whenever I see my nephew, you know, I'll tell him, you know, if I see a Batman cartoon. And I think it's for a very similar reason that whenever I see a liquor store, I'll call my mom to tell her about it. <laughs> ah. got to the end that's it was a, good... a long walk Sonic it was could have done it faster yeah <laughs> that was a genuine laugh i'm sorry that it comes out the way that it does right because no. sonic would have been like whoa did you know my mom's an alcoholic and then he'd walk off stage. <laughs> uh. abby you know uh you have uh a a run of shows Yes, I do. Yes, I do. In in the month of June, I've got three shows uh, in the Hollywood Fringe uh, Theater Festival, three uh, live stand-up shows. 
Uh, they will be streaming online. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, the theater manager is sort of ducking me about how to actually set up the, the matter of uh, streaming. I am assured that uh, we will have it sorted out by the time of the shows. Uh, the first one is May 8th, which is a Saturday at 2, and then May 22nd, can't be, also a Saturday can't at be 2. May 8th. May 8th was yesterday. Or yeah, June. Sorry, June. I believe June 8th. Uh-huh. June 8th. Okay. Uh, and yeah, June, now we're back I, on board. I have postcards with it on it, but they're on the other side of the room. Uh, the, the, throughout June, uh, three, three times. If you go on the Hollywood Fringe website, hollywoodfringe.com, and look up Abby Denton, my brother, the car, or... Really, eighty percent of those words should help you find the, the landing page for it. <laughs> well, the um, link is in the description, so don't yes. don't you worry, dear listener. We've got yeah, you covered yeah. on where to find it. But uh, hey. my brother, the car. So this is a reference, I think, to my mother, the car, right? Which is an old TV show, which I know about. Probably most people know about. Bo would say he knows about it from Arrested Development, which did a sort sort of a at least referenced it in a title. My mother, the car. That's right. And then I learned about it maybe through listening to the writer commentaries where they were like, yeah, there's, there's a TV show where like uh, a mom's spirit takes over like a Buick or something and talks to it's like Herbie, but ghost dad, but a mom. Is that right? <laughs> that, that, that's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. It, uh, the love matic grandpa was the Simpsons parody of it where grandpa Simpson possesses a love test machine. And just curses the the hell that his his life has been transformed into, and it, it's very strange that era of sitcoms, you know, talking horses, people trapped on islands. Uh, my mom is not someone who can buy into uh, absurdity easily in the modern day. Like if 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 you watch a a movie where people kill people, she's fine with that. She loves blood and violence. Uh, but if you watch a movie where someone kills someone and like there might be a ghost, then she's like, I I don't understand this. This is this is beyond me. I, I, I showed her everything everywhere all at once. And I was just, you know, crying buckets at the end of it. Cause I was like, Hey, you see what I wanted you to watch this mommy? It's a, it's a mommy. It's a mommy. And she was like, Oh, well, I, I, I suppose I can see why it might've meant a lot to you. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> she just, she just cannot cross that small gap of imagination. Yeah, uh, the, the uh, I guess parallel universe stories haven't ever really, you know, she didn't live through the eighties. Uh, uh, well, no, she did. She very much did. Right. <laughs> uh, she didn't. She didn't watch cartoons. She didn't live in among cartoons as a child. You know, so so you don't have that. All right. Well, when was she? That basically. Oh, but she does love like sixties. She's like, oh, Mister Ed. They should make another Mister Ed. My mother, the car. What a great idea! For some reason, that is the level of stupid nonsense that she's fine with and i don't know what it is i don't know if it's just the sort of the veneer of old hollywood people i don't know right i don't know it, what it is, is probably a, a like generational it. thing yeah it makes sense because i feel like my mother everything that came out when she was a kid is great and she never understood anything after that in terms of childhoodness i don't know thankfully we're not like that yeah welcome back to sonic well, well i mean i mean it's it, you have to have pity for the older generation because they didn't grow up with Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, that is true. You know, which is, of course, the peak of, of society, civilization, culture. Yes. Yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog, Digimon, these are uh, the things we live with. And, that, and th these are the things that will last. Nothing else will. Well, okay. My, my Brother the Car is a stand-up show or is it? It, uh, it is. It's an hour of live stand-up comedy. It will, streaming options will be available. Um, oh, okay. Right. 2 p.m. Pacific time, so it it won't even be midnight uh, Greenwich Mean Time right. for okay. your listeners. And I looked it up. It's June eighth, June twenty second, and June thirtieth. Looks like June thirtieth is a 9 p.m. show. That is an evening show. Yes. So, Whoa, uh, that that's for the adults out there. The other two are better... just for the children. <laughs> yes. Right. This um, will be the soberest crowd I've probably ever performed for. Uh, 2 p.m. <laughs> or alternately, the 2 p.m. crowd might be just the saddest drugs you can imagine. <laughs> it, it, those are the two possibilities. Right. It's, it's one day off from Sonic's uh, legally accepted birthday, which, of course, is not his real birthday, but his legally designated birthday. Did you push? Which day is that? June you know 23rd. This, have, we, have we talked about this? Have we? Right. I'm, I've brought it up at least 
once or twice on the show. I don't know if Abby is familiar with the I fact. I don't think that... I am. See, June okay, 23rd. Is, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do the quick version. You know, Sega says Sonic 1 came out June 23rd, 1991. And that is a lie. The There is, there is evidence, historical evidence, that it was on sale at least by uh, June 11th uh, because video games did not have concrete release dates at that until point in time sonic 2 sonic until 2 was sonic tuesday until sonic made tuesday. a big deal about it yeah uh. so before that sonic 1 simply existed and rolled out and when stores got it they put it on shelves there is no real release date it was decided after the fact because you need to have a date for your big franchise i guess you know when it comes to super mario brothers at least it's easier you can see there was a you know a test run like here's the nes in New York, like it's a date. Sonic was just a game. Well, see, <laughs> Sonic One, you need a long runway to like pick up momentum. Yeah, and Sonic Two, it's a spin dash. So <laughs> hey. that's why the releases follow that same momentum uh, method. Ology. I guess so. I I do not have the the language skills to to read uh, Goro Awase letters. Or numbers, but I, I've always enjoyed those. Are we familiar with the the concept? No, nope. no. It's it's I guess something about the structure of the Japanese language. Is it's a lot easier to make puns because a lot of syllables will have homophones and homonyms. No homophones. Um, and so a lot of of like characters' birthdays and things and cartoons will be a pun, uh, like uh, Luffy in One Piece. I, well, okay, pretty much every One Piece character. Like there's a big list because he does like a letters column. Pretty much every single one is is a, a pun somehow, like the, the date of their birth. And I don't know what any of them are. And I'm wondering if that's why they went for uh, June 23rd with uh, Sanic. If it's not based on anything, it might just be, might be a tax thing. Who knows? It could be any number <laughs> of things. Goro Wase seems like the more fun <laughs> answer. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, that does seem fun. I, the, the, the pet theory that I had was there's a member of Sonic team whose name now escapes me, who was born on June 23rd ah. and that they just went, yeah, why not? Um, I guess Oshima, we, we, we had messaged him and he was, he shot that down, but also, you know, N Naka made a tweet and said like, Oh, I picked the date <laughs> somewhere, mm. you know, when in his, it's gotten buried underneath all of his uh, legal troubles. Although Naka is, is fine and well. He he tweeted recently, right? He defended <laughs> himself. Abby, do do you do you wish that you could have dinner with Yuji Naka and ask him about all his crimes, both public I and private? Wish I could have dinner with Yuji Naka and ask him for some more hot stock tips because it sounds like he's got a lot of them. <laughs> I don't see why we put a man in prison for helping people. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you know what? What is insider trading but letting more people into the in crowd? Yeah, when members of Congress do it, we allow uh, them yeah. to continue serving. Yeah, they're basically huh. just putting you know fines on Naka for being a nerd, which isn't nice. <laughs> like, well, I'm a classic stocks nerd. I love trading all the up to the minute uh, deets. Right, he, <laughs> he's been doing it for years. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this. I glanced over and I was like, hey, we never finished the news. Did you know Sonic Mania Plus is on Netflix games? That's great. Did you know Bahama Buck has Sonic shaved ice treats? That's great. Oh. That's all. Who cares? Yeah. Well, Sonic Mania Plus uh, on Netflix, I guess, also runs uh, not so great. That's no. what some people are saying. Saying it's not optimized. Saying it's got frame rate dips. Saying it's fucking not doing what it's supposed to. And, you know. Sonic Rumble, it's a bummer, bro. Oh, right. I haven't had Netflix in a long time. Mm -hmm. oh. And so I haven't, you know, maybe technology has marched on. But the last Netflix games thing that I played was uh, the Black Mirror thing, Bandersnatch. And I don't think that control scheme would translate well to Sonic Mania. <laughs> <laughs> what if it did, though? Yeah, uh, no, this is just for mobile, I guess, or like uh, iOS yeah, devices. So it has a, a touch screen. So you can you can make Sonic move with your thumb. I already make Sonic move with my thumb. That is how most video game <laughs> controllers work. I, I don't follow. Uh, <laughs> no, I still I only play games using that. Oh, oh no, I can't even remember it. Is it was, wasn't there something like 
like the geo force it was something like nes where it's like like you your control mouth. it with your lips and like you, you like, just talk you to it and you tell it like forward forward go go like that's perverse you would shout and it would... i remember there was a playstation 2 game where you were like you were trapped in a like a control booth mm-hmm. and this lit you were like following a lady with uh security cameras and you'd be like oh there's a monster behind you shoot it she'd be like yes <laughs> that yes it's a mo- i'm gonna shoot it why are you it, it it was apparently a very frustrating game abby have you um engaged with the paramount knuckles television program i've devoured every episode i can tell you any detail you'd like to know about it (laughs) are you sure (laughs) i'm absolutely sure i would love to talk to you about my favorite tv show (laughs) nipples the echidna (laughs) well how did you feel about uh episode three i feel like episode three i think is where the show really starts to come together the first two episodes it's clear that the special effects budget wasn't really there like there are some uh-huh. scenes where knuckles the echidna is just a, a, a tennis ball hanging from a string <laughs> and characters are yelling at him but they uh-huh. haven't even they couldn't even afford to get idris elva into the sound booth <laughs> <laughs> and so you just see this tennis ball wiggling while from the the force of their sound waves while they're yelling at it and uh-huh. uh, i know there's one bit where they they yell at it so loud that it it flies back slams into a wall and then ricochets back and smacks him in the head and and that's sort of like the action scene for episode two. Uh, but yeah. by episode three, they've got the hand puppet, haven't they? They've <laughs> gotten in the Knuckles hand puppet. Right. And I think that's where it really starts to come into his own because they now look, they still don't have Idris Elba in the sound booth again because he's a very famous, popular actor. You can't have him in all the time. Uh, and so instead what they did, and I think it works, is um, Josh Gad. <laughs> <laughs> uh doing it doing a, an accent doing a french accent because oh wow that was i think the most interesting thematic element that they introduced was that like he's trying to learn french and so he starts talking <laughs> in french sort of almost at random i think <laughs> that what, yeah. what did we think of his of his french because i i don't speak french so i couldn't really tell you uh, if he was doing a good job there i think we saw a different show i don't remember any of this I, I think his French is on the same level as Antoine's. So, what a great character! Bring Twan. Back Antoine. Twan. Twan. I think yeah. I think we do need like a coward character. It's kind of like who's who's the coward now? I guess it was Tails in F- Sonic Forces. Oh yeah. Now now he's now he's now he's brave enough to ask if he's a burden in Sonic Frontiers. Right. I was going to say like was Wade a, a coward type character, but I don't know. I don't know how cowardly he ever really was. He just sort of coasts. I don't know. Smoothies, you're the official Wade Whipple fan club president. Wade is not a coward. No. He uh very easily in just a matter of days gets transformed into a warrior. I don't think you can do that with a coward. So. <laughs> I, I guess so. He he just didn't know his potential. Is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I don't think he really ever behaves cowardly either. Like the only time he does is when he's surrounded, he's on the phone. He has moments where he's not 100% confident, but he's still always trying. Yeah, that's true. Because okay. even that's a like mark of bravery right there. Yeah, right. His car gets stolen, destroyed by tails. And he's like, I guess I'm going to be on a scooter now. He <laughs> stumbles across Agent Stone. He's like, yeah. I guess I got to hold you at gunpoint or whatever. Right. He's he is still he's in there. He's like, I am a member of law enforcement. <laughs> yeah, I guess one of the only two police officers who are good because they are sonic's friends uh because we established i don't know you might want to remove this part let's go uh did you know (laughs) wade uh but but yeah yeah no uh, wade wade is yeah i guess so uh smoothies we've we've talked about knuckles we've talked uh elsewhere we mentioned last episode there's a whole ftcr discussion about about the knuckles show that's true what i want you to do is convince Abby that she should subscribe to Paramount Plus right now and and why the Knuckles show is worth her time. Um, Abby, it's very easy to get a free trial of Paramount Plus. <laughs> and within that amount of time, you can watch the Knuckles show easily. <laughs> Abby, furthermore, I'll give you a login. It's not my login. It's actually our mutual <laughs> friend Michael Stern's login. But I will give it to you and you can watch it 100%. If I'd only known, I could have just asked Michael directly. 
Oh. No, 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 no. We can cut it. No, 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 no. Don't, don't worry about that. It's he fine. is no longer in control of his account. He I am already stealing his crunchy roll. Oh, yeah. Listen, we just, you know, it's just cutting out the middleman. It's just like getting Poor password Michael. directly to. So, in in the spirit of Sonic the Hedgehog, while you chat, I'll I'll be speed watching, sort of at at ten times speed, the Knuckles the Echidna show. And so, by the time you know you're ready. I'll have watched because I think I think what I must have gotten sent was like the the Emmy screener or something that they hadn't quite <laughs> finalized all the shots. Oh man! You know, and, and you by the time you saw it, they they'd finally is. Will this show yeah. have an Emmy screener? Like it I'm already sure. does. I have it. Oh, <laughs> come on! Yes, Andy, yeah. come on! Yeah. yeah. Uh, how hard is it to get Emmy screeners? Is what I want to know. I someone in my building must have. I don't I don't know if they worked somewhere or not. Like when we moved in, there were just piles and piles of Emmy screeners in the lobby. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They they stack up for the, the people that receive them. But uh, not everyone's in these guilds. So not everyone receives them, but they tend to get passed around through friends and coworkers and so on. So, and they or just even though the stickers around tell you, you shouldn't do that. They say not for resale or do not share or like shh and like <laughs> a finger over some lips. Uh, you know, it, it's weird because that Care Bears show that was on Netflix a while back, uh, the, the screeners they put up for that also said do not share over the mm. episode about the importance of sharing, which I strongly feel <laughs> uh, someone should have got that. Yeah, uh, that's good. I like that. It, it had been put, put out by Professor Coldheart. <laughs> okay, so Abby, we have a contractual obligation with the listeners to talk about on this show the final two episodes of Knuckles from Paramount, episodes five and episode six. Have you seen the movie Kingpin? The bowler movie? Yeah. That was written by a professor of mine. Really? Oh. Yeah. He 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 strongly felt that it, it evidenced every every skill that a screenwriter needed. Oh, I don't like, know if, if that's true, but I, who am I? Think I think it's a good disagree? movie. And I think it's, I think it's a well constructed screenplay. Uh, I, I don't remember the name of the two writers. I do remember that it was two same, men. same people who wrote uh, the secret diary of Desmond Pfeiffer. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is, this is true. This isn't me doing a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm I, not I, completely familiar with that. Right. It was uh, written by yeah. Barry, Fanaro, it's got oh, fan in the name, and Mort Nathan. Wow. Okay, those those are the okay. people. You can look this up on Wikipedia. Wow, Barry well, Fanaro looks that up. Uh, Abby, are you interested in spoilers or no? I love spoilers. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Wow. So I think I think we're we're what? we're gonna talk about episodes five and six. Well, I'm just about there in my speed watch. So wait a minute. He, he all right. I'm up the... to speed. Spoil he away. Worked, you worked on the Golden Girls. Yeah, oh. you, quite a career. You get burying the lead. The Golden Girls is great. <laughs> well, we just... I, I think The Secret Diary of Desmond Pfeiffer is a much funnier show to reference. <laughs> yeah, there you... the NAACP. Uh, it's one of the few TV shows that they've explicitly that... acknowledged existing. Is that Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> it is. It's the first episode was about Abraham Lincoln getting really into sexting over um, over what? Telegram. <laughs> with someone who turns out to be Mary Todd Lincoln. Oh, what? Like it? It is a very silly show. It, were they married, or is this how they met? They, they were. They were married, but they both thought that they were cheating on each other. So they were both like running around behind each other's oh, backs. It's like to try to rekindle the spark, and then at the end, all happy ending. They realize that they were in love with each other, but not before they both like to keep their spouses from finding out about it. Like plan to meet like on a battlefield or something, if I remember. It's a heck of a show. It's 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 a Black Adder thing. I see. Wow. Um, and it never, it doesn't grapple with the fact that Desmond Pfeiffer, the, the Black Adder figure, is a, a black man in the 1800s, which the NAACP feels they should have grappled with a little more. Who am I to disagree? Right. <laughs> but uh, it, it is a heck of a, a heck of a show to exist. And I wanted uh -huh. to share with you that it does exist. I, I, want, I want to burden you with this knowledge. I'm going to have to watch it now. There were nine episodes and it looks like. Two of half, them. Half, yeah, there's air dates for four of them. Uh, <laughs> That's the sign of a quality show. Oh, wow. Are the are they? 
is the whole thing available or is it like i have no idea i've only watched the first episode okay i'm sorry i'm going off topic knuckles okay yep. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to sonic weekly knuckles, knuckles five and six we 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 said we would do it we gotta do it i brought up kingpin so i already feel fine just watch kingpin did you watch kingpin david I, I I didn't get around to watching it yet. Ah, damn it! I gave you a good password. You did. I man. mean, I I was like, okay, I should sit down and watch it. I just that's all right. Didn't get around uh, to it. I'll come back yeah, next week fine. and tell you everything about Kingpin. This movies. Have you seen this movie, Kingpin? No, I've never seen it. But... <laughs> all right, good, 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 good. <laughs> Listen, uh, is it too late to do a call in segment where we have we can we give out a phone number? And have listeners call in. <laughs> if anyone out there has seen Kingpin, call Sonic Weekly Podcast at gmail.com and we'll pick yep. it up. There's a Kingpin reference in like episode two of Knuckles, right? Yeah. <laughs> there is. We talked about that. Hello, That's my, Grant. That's my experience. Yeah. I'm calling in. I'd like to talk to you about the movie Kingpin. <laughs> oh. Woody Harris is great in that. Yeah, that's true. He he does do a good job. I, I've seen the big Lebowski. That's also about bowling. Yeah. <laughs> Kingpin is probably is that a does Sony have that one? Did they do Madam Web Kingpin? What? Or has that passed over to uh I don't know who the Spider-Verse movies are from. Well, I mean, th- those are Sony films, but I don't know who distributed Kingpin. Do you think Woody Harrelson would do a great job performing Spider-Man villain Kingpin? Mm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think he would do a good job. Woody Harrelson should be which Sonic character? Ooh, I think you do a good vector. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I I've kind of felt like he was a charmy, but charmy, you know now that you say him. now that you say vector, it's like oh yeah, that it feels like a uh, feels like that that's a fit. Who's the chillest? Like he has sort of like a low energy, like mm. relaxed, buddy vibe. Like I could see Big yeah. the Cat. Yeah, maybe. vector. Oh yeah, big too. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, he he does play a good dumb guy. Famously on Cheers, oh, he's yeah. a dumb guy. I don't suppose any of us have a good Woody Harrelson impression. No, no. Yeah, well, I, I definitely I don't. don't. We could I, do Big the Cat, uh, Austin oh. St. John doing a Woody line from Cheers. Yeah. Okay. So what? Hey, Coach. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we, we reached the end of every every. Welcome to every Cheers. <laughs> That's Dracula. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm, I'm is there a vampire in Sonic the Hedgehog? Like, is there ever a guy who's like, "Hello, Sonic, I am going to eat you." Hey, yeah. um, Sam and Diana, Sam, Sam and Rebecca, hey, Diane. <laughs> Froggy. My baseball player pal got eaten by chaos. Oh. Norm. That's what happened to the first bartender, right? (laughs) What about the uh, (laughs) Frasier uh, reboot? Or not reboot, but... um, Continuation? Revival? Continuation. The Um, the assault. Oh. (laughs) That show about how kids spend too much time on the iPhones. Uh Is is that what... I watched the first episode and I went, I don't, this, it seems like it's missing the point of Frasier, even though Frasier Crane's uh, right there. And Isn't um, it on the same network as Knuckles? <laughs> yeah. The hey, first episode right, I think was free on YouTube connects. or something. Um, yeah, same as Knuckles. Yeah, that's right. You could have watched the first episode of Knuckles on YouTube for free. Yeah. Of course, I could have also watched Kingpin did. before we recorded. <laughs> <laughs> we could have all done a lot of things differently that's, and better, that... <laughs> but I think what we have done is we've made a podcast. Have we? Are, and, are we done talking about yeah. Knuckles? I feel because we brought in movies. <laughs> he brought me in to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> the extent of the discussion of Knuckles is that there's yeah. some sort of connection to the film Kingpin. <laughs> We're not <laughs> sure at once. <laughs> Well, to perhaps. what extent did we discuss knuckles? <laughs> no, well, I refuse to acknowledge my part in this digression. <laughs> I, I thought for half a second you were going to play the the lead out music, but it was tempting. It was tempting, right? I, it's like I almost heard it in my head, and I was like, "Wait, wait!" But then it, it didn't actually go. Wait, we should talk briefly about knuckles, about the All ending. Right. Uh, you oh, said you don't care about spoilers, Abby. Okay, um, so we, you you know, Ken Penders was in episode four, just so you know, but we've already talked about it. <laughs> As a puppet, 
There is a Knuckles puppet in episode. Well, it's an echidna puppet. Oh, uh, because oh, yeah. his his dad. His dad is a puppet briefly in episode four, and um, he has glasses and a mustache. And a mustache. It kind of looks like Ken Penders. <laughs> yeah. It also so. kind of looks like my dad. I mean, it just kind of looks like a dad. I Have mean, it is. Is he, he looks like an echidna. Voice. Yeah. I forget if we've talked about this. I love that he's just like a New Jersey guy. He's just hey, and then I thought, uh, what if uh, what if there was a pink one with a robot hair? But <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. a boom. <laughs> Right. He's actually, not the voice I ever expected for him. A voice that delighted me to hear. He's at <laughs> his his accent. Uh, he's from Buffalo, New York. Same as this guy. Ooh, which guy? Grant. Oh, oh wow! Grant. Did you? Maybe you grew up in Ken's family home. I may have. <laughs> um, Buffalo, New York. I think you mean New York, the Buffalo. <laughs> Happy to help. <laughs> So, you know, episodes five and six are apparently just Kingpin the film. Uh, there's a lot of bowling. Uh, Knuckles is occasionally. No, there. no, 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 no. I'm saying that it when it rips off from Kingpin okay. makes you want to watch Kingpin and, okay. and appreciate Kingpin. OK. Episode five is fine. Pistol Pete is the thing to the, that's carry. The Kingpin. OK, no, no, no. Forget it. Forget Kingpin. <laughs> forget Kingpin. OK. I mean, don't forget it. Do watch it. I will watch it. Because Abby's professor wrote it. Yeah. And I recommended it. Right. And Knuckles is intentionally and loudly borrowing from it, and it's and it's a fun movie. Anyway, in episode five, this is one of the episodes where Knuckles isn't really there. It's Wade and the family drama between him and Pistol Pete, his famous bowling father who left him at a TJ Maxx when Wade was eight. Uh, he's very British. He's... Got the Union Jack flag on his suit. He does like a sort of a dance number or something. He he parades around the casino. Yeah. And it, it's presented to us as a dance sequence, but I don't think it's an actual like, hold on, I'm doing a dance sequence. No, he's just showing up. Yeah. And doing a random stuff. Doing a random. Right. How did you feel about this episode, though, David? Oh. Did it upset you? <laughs> Because you said that you feel like the show falls off during episodes five and six. I, I did say that. I feel like. <laughs> It just I, oh, right. It's it's because the the show starts and it's like okay, this is the Knuckles and Wade show or Wade and Knuckles, and that's fine. And then it just I mean, it becomes more and more Wade. And then I it, I think it's it it sort of steps one toe to uh, beyond into cartoony, where like the Sonic the Sonic movies feature Sonic the Hedgehog. It's going to be a little cartoony. But the, there's a tone and a universe sort of established in one and two. And then the show at some point went never mind. And then it just focuses on, I don't know. It, oh God, I'm trying to think now. Doesn't episode one literally have a business card with a talking face on it in Wade's mind. Uh, like it, it, it starts off cartoony. It does. It? Well, I mean, like if there's things in Wade's mind, that's different than this seems to be actually happening. I think it was like in episode six when his mother showed up driving the bowling pin yeah like i was like i don't know why that's happening right now like how did she find this car why does this car vehicle was never introduced until this very moment it's no weird. it's not like it was sitting <laughs> like if all oh, right if there had been an establishing shot of like hey it's being sponsored by ford bowling pins and you're like okay like come up with the uh, i you would come up with a better name than what I just did because it's not anything. I just said Ford sure. and bowling pin and like it's sitting there and you're like, yeah, it has great gas mileage. It's like 14 miles to the gallon. You're like, ah, oh, of course that's great gas mileage. Ha ha. I made a joke. And then like, well, there's all the commotion. The, the mother is, is about to escape and she looks over and sees it. And it's like, wait a minute. Like, yeah, then I probably would have accepted it more instead of it just appearing and I guess, is it meant to help? I don't know. We're just waiting until we have the budget to make Knuckles wake up and defeat the enemy. <laughs> That's not true. She brings him. She brings Wade bowling balls to throw at the bad guy. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is he's throwing. It's like we're giving Wade something to do because at the end, it's like, well, the fight sequence really should be Knuckles. And I guess Knuckles fighting it. it it's very short compared to, I think, or maybe it just feels longer when wade is sitting there talking it's the same as sonic movie one that last fight's pretty short too it it is pretty short but i guess 
Also, we you had guys a lot are talking of... about episode six. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we skipped episode, on to six. Now. Episode episode five. Skip. Yeah, episode Knuckles five. Knuckles is laying in bed. He is laying... in the hotel room. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> he's now, laying. He is watching. Wait TV. a minute. He's he's watching TV. Yeah. He may be eating Doritos again, <laughs> which obsessed. I don't one hundred percent remember. He's a gamer, but I want to try to put in. I don't know what to what. I, I want to put in one piece of false information and then see if any of it sticks out. Who okay. sure gonna lie? <laughs> yeah, right. This is the game that we're playing with Abby. Okay, go ahead. I win at that game every time. Yeah. Well, I mean, now it, it's a, impossible because everything everything is everything has been true. So if I say the next thing is a lie, <laughs> or I can just say what it is is true. But I'll just tell you what. There's no bowling happens. in this show. It's mainly a you said in Sonic's fun world, they're going loop de loops. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, Knuckles accidentally orders Home Alone two, and it's the scene where Donald Trump appears, and Knuckles realizes that Wade was part of the January sixth insurrection, <laughs> and that's why Knuckles says, "Oh," while he's in bed. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, so do we all know why uh, the Knuckles show is mainly about a guy named Wade? He's the breakout character from the first two films. Because <laughs> if it was the Tales show, his name would be Swim. <laughs> David gets it. All right. <laughs> I do. Thanks. It was very subtle. I enjoyed it. Because Knuckles can't, can't swim. He has to wade. It's the Wade. Oh, right. Sonic the Hedgehog also refuses to learn. Like Knuckles, at least, you know, he's usually <laughs> in the air. Uh-huh. He's gliding. Like there might be lakes on the floating uh-huh. island, but. Yeah. Right. I guess he swims in Sonic Adventure 2. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So You're he right. can. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't work. I'm sorry. I don't know. I still thought it was, it was, it was good. I like it. it. Good. It's, yeah. a, it's a contribution. So when, when they introduce a bowling pin car. Uh huh. Yeah. Is there is there a moment where someone's like, "Oh, I can't drive this bowling pin car. I have too many strikes on my driver's license." <laughs> like, do they go for that, or are they too classy? Um, I I liked your Ford bowling pin joke. I think uh, okay. I think it, at least. It's... <laughs> yeah. It it it. Uh, like overall, I I I'm glad the show exists, and I I I like more of it than I don't like. I, I think just maybe. Um, I think I sort of said this before. Okay, because because uh, the bowling occurs on ESPN Ocho, which was introduced in Dodgeball, an underdog story, main, meaning it's part of the canon. And you have the the two announcers, and one of them is Paul Shear, who hosts a podcast called How Did This Get Made, which is thematically has a spinoff that was called How Did This Get Played, which is now called Just Get Played, which Grant guessed it on. It all connects. And wow, yeah. <laughs> And I enjoy Paul Shear. I think he's funny, but I've come to realize that if he shows up somewhere random, I go, oh, no, does that mean that the rest of the show is somehow suddenly bad? Because I feel like he will appear in things and everything surrounding him is not good. <laughs> Even if you I think, think it's to guarantee that he'll have more content for his podcast. <laughs> and so he sabotages the productions he's involved with. And I don't I don't I don't know what it is like. I think he's funny and when he shows up i'm like oh okay i'm laughing at him but like i don't know if it's just this is i don't know if if i ever meet him in person i will not say this to him because i'll be like wait why do you I think it's a power move whenever i meet a celebrity <laughs> i say like so what you know i name their worst project and, and, oh, no. you know it, it, it's prison rules you know you go right. to, the, to the most popular celebrity in the yard yeah and and you just neg them Right. Oh, man. But yes, it, it, the episode five is about the family drama. We have Pistol Pete. Uh, he sells out his family to gun because the gun soldiers return when it's like, oh, yeah, they were here. We didn't really. They sort of vanished. They were replaced with bounty hunters. Uh, <laughs> it all makes sense <laughs> to somebody yeah. who hasn't watched the show. And and so we do have like, oh, is, is there reconciliation happening? And for a moment, it's like maybe there could be, but that would be too simple. There has to be the betrayal. I guess it's a little funny that he was ready to sell them out without really being forced to. Like, there wasn't even a moment where he went, oh, I'm just doing this to save my own hide. He was just like, eh, I mean, you're not a good bowler. You suck, Wade, my son. Just give up 
the weird echidna. I don't care. I, I guess I found it pretty believable because they had made such a point to emphasize that he's British. Oh, so I was like, oh, right, folks, yeah. folks. So the the Boulder character was was his own character because I'd I'd watch that thinking it was another like, oh, that's going to be Knuckles once they do the VFX, and <laughs> it turns out that he's birthed Wade or something. Oh, uh, in like the backstory, Knuckles never bowls. Can you believe that? He he throws one bowling ball and destroys many pins in like episode one. He causes he doesn't bowl in regulation. No, no. He he could have. He should have. If if like Knuckles entered and like if if it was Wade and Knuckles bowling instead of Wade in the in that little girl, I feel like I would have liked the episode way more instead of Knuckles just sitting at a bar. <laughs> watching it on ESPN Ocho. He's there. He can sit in the audience. Yeah. If you made a cocktail for Knuckles, uh-huh. What would it be? Uh uh He likes grapes, which means he would probably like wine. Yeah. Okay. But that's not really Okay, a, I like I, your Yeah. And, and you want some punch. Hey. In there. <clears throat> a, little, a little Hawaiian. You want a little Hawaiian punch. punch. I, there's probably a, a cocktail out there called like the Chaos Emerald. Or whatever, like it ends up turning green. You put some lime juice in it, or whatever. Uh -huh. That's probably. Uh, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, I'm also sitting here going, you know what? Maybe episodes five and six weren't as bad as I thought, even though I haven't rewatched them. I'm I'm not like sitting here going, okay, that was bad. All I'm thinking what? about is that car. I think that I just don't like the <laughs> pin car. It's, such a... it's it's so random. Yeah, it like well, because episode five does have some like it has the opening thing where for some reason Knuckles is doing a earpiece thing mm -hmm. with Wade to tell Wade how to talk to his dad. Yeah, Pistol Pete. Okay, that was a, yeah. It's weird. It's a kind of a shaky premise, but you're like uh, maybe it'll go somewhere good. It doesn't really. But Knuckles is involved is the key thing, and. That's pretty fun. It also and they justify why nobody is freaking out when they see him, which we noticed was inconsistent because there's a mascot convention, right? Very conveniently, they do explain yeah. it in Ve or not Vegas in Reno. Reno, sorry, Reno, wrong, yeah. wrong. I will say I'm very impressed. Like to save money on VFX, the idea of having Knuckles mainly interacting with the show over over a headset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, he's just like kind of a VTuber for a little while. You know. The first headset bit's to set up the second headset bit, where um, we don't realize Knuckles is wearing the earbud when he goes up the elevator. Oh. You know what? Four, I didn't even occur to me. Okay, it's actually a good, mm -hmm. good episode. And and how, how mad were you? Okay, so talking about five into six, mm -hmm. how mad were you at Wade when he betrayed Knuckles? He betrayed Except he him. didn't. You, they, 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 they let you think that he's betraying Knuckles. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. When they let you think it for that mo for that one second, I know where they're letting you hang on it. Would you betray Knuckles <laughs> if, if you had the opportunity? That's, that's the moral question. Thank you for asking it. Yeah, we're talking about game theory. We're talking about cooperator betray Knuckles. <laughs> right. Okay. So prisoner's if, dilemma. Okay. The right. So dilemma. if Wade's family is tied to one track <laughs> and Knuckles is tied to the other track. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that's a good. Oh, okay. Now I, I remember now one of the things that bothered me. And I think it's because it, it felt like one of those moments of missed opportunity and like sort of the redundancy of the buyer as existing as a character. It was because in episode five, right, we establish that like the, the female gun agent, well, I don't remember her name. Lady Willoughby. Willoughby. Lady Willoughby. She's not, I don't know why I called her Lady Willoughby. She's British, right? She is. Oh, man. That would have been funny if, like, Pistol Pete and Agent Willoughby, like, had Stay a secret target. relationship. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she she establishes why she betrayed Gunn and why she is against, why she, she doesn't care for Sonic or Knuckles. Like, she's, she's, she's going, oh, this is an alien thing threat and we're just letting them play house in green hills and they're making me you know put together fake weddings and, and doing on gift cards and like she has a clear motivation and when she states this motivation i'm like oh why is she not the main villain why is she suddenly like just a middleman why is she exactly why is she selling stuff to the buyer who she discovers later oh you worked with robotnik when i feel like 
maybe she should have already known that. And that's why she's been working with this mysterious buyer, because she would have been on Robotnik's side to begin with. He was like, oh, we got to capture this this hedgehog and dissect him and turn all of his quills into weapons. Like, yeah, there's all these things. And it's like suddenly dropped in the middle of nowhere is this motivation. And it doesn't even matter because then they die. Yeah. Knuckles kills them. And yep. Yeah, pretty unceremoniously and, and pretty definitively as well. It, it, it <laughs> like, seems like I, I guess hypothetically, maybe they're in some weird void and that maybe they'll pop out of a random giant ring that opens up somewhere. I mean, you could sure. write your way out of it. But for the moment, it does feel like Knuckles the Echidna just murdered two people before murdering a third, which I guess maybe he didn't kill the buyer, but we never see him again. <sighs> I'm I'm going to say Knuckles killed three people in this show. This version of Sonic so is, is that Knuckles... too few or too many? <laughs> uh, if he had been allowed to bowl, it probably would have been a lot more. Uh... <laughs> this version of Sonic and Knuckles are not above killing. Sonic kills Robotnik, as far as he knows, at the end of movie two. True. And he snaps Knuckles... his neck, right? He's going to kill Metropolis, and then Sonic has exactly. to. Exactly. Right. That's right. I mean, do we have the sense that Sonic in the games is. Like Metropolis Zone, sorry. Wait, I mean, we go. Oh, Sonic doesn't kill anyone because Eggman comes back time and time again. But do we ever get the sense that Sonic defeats Eggman? There's a big explosion, and he's like, "Well, he's not dead. I know he's not dead." Or is it like, does he think this time maybe he killed Eggman and he's okay with it? So the the eighties cartoon element of it, where like he's mainly fighting robots. Mm-hmm. Do we think that's that's just so that we don't have to grapple with how bloodthirsty Sonic is? <laughs> <laughs> like he would be killing if he had the chance, I, and it's only by. I mean, of, it kind of yeah, it does sort of feel like the the Ninja Turtles excuse, like oh, it's fine, they, they can use their swords. Although I guess then Mario is the murderer, right? Because yeah. Goombas are sentient, Koopas are sentient. Yeah, like Mario, you are killing thousands of his troops of, of bowser's troops. self-defense david oh okay they were coming right for him you could just hop over the just <laughs> going left to right jump over him. <laughs> like the goomba that's just in between the two pipes i, <laughs> I love Mario. the idea of the pacifist run of super mario brothers where like you get to the end and peach is like i'm impressed mario <laughs> And like the the genocide run where he's destroyed everything in the mushroom kingdom and peach is like oh jeez dude <laughs> the yeah. undertale version of super mario brothers uh, the, yeah okay okay you were itching uh and then you 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 went it went quiet grant i think what are your final thoughts about knuckles the echidna the television series on paramount plus available now i think overall it is not as kotaku would have you believe the worst piece of sonic media they rank it at the very bottom of their list of Sonic adaptations. Is Sonic Underground? That's what I'm saying. No way. Do they have a way. tier list or did they just say it's the worst? Like, did they have an actual list? It's a list? tier list. Yeah, there's oh, a list. I, I posted wait, it in the, the chat. I thought you guys saw it. When did you post this? Earlier today. I missed it completely. Post it in, the, uh, in this chat. I saw it, but I didn't click it. Oh. Because I know my opinions. I, I could tell you. Well, shoot. I mean, I mean that's a whole... <laughs> yeah, that could be its its own episode, but I, I'm I'm just like curious now. But yeah, they say Knuckles is the worst below Sonic Underground. Hell this is no. the same writer, I think, though, that had Sonic Heroes as their number one Sonic 3D platformer. Mm. So I think they like a particular thing, and the way that this these seem to be ranked is like based on accuracy. So it's like Sonic X spoiler is number one because it's most game accurate, uh. and Knuckles is at the bottom because I guess it's less accurate than sonic underground that's not a uh, but i mean that's that's a different sort of judgment that's just what's the most faithful adaptation not worst to best well okay i'm starting this I like philosophically i like the idea of that because it implies that like you sort of have the plato's allegory of the cave reading of sonic where like sonic one is it's just the pure reality <laughs> and every subsequent sequel, every adaptation is just like a like a man trying to describe it to people who've only ever seen <sighs> shadows on the wall. Mm-hmm. They only saw sh- oh, that's how Shadow eventually. Hey! <laughs> All right, so Knuckles Underground, and you're gonna go to the ne- the OVA. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait. Where do they place the OVA? Because that's gotta just be above under. Top. So if if Knuckles is on the bottom, 
then it's underground, then it's the OVA. What? Yeah. That's way so too much. OVA is like the best thing ever made. The, I then agree. You, and they, you know, you know, their justification for putting the OVA low is the Eric's the... not real. I mean, I guess that makes me <laughs> sad too. She should be in more stuff. Oh, they're just talking about <laughs> the American life. voices, like yeah, who? Which I love. I think they're great. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah. So then it's Tales of the Cold. I think that's great characterization. I think that's yeah. a very funny. Me too. The, the OVA is great. I don't know what this person's on. Okay, so the AOSTH, then Sat AM. Oh, then they're just throwing in the first movie. So okay. Yeah, this is everything, baby. Then Prime? Oh, my God. Prime is so high. Uh, then Boom, which, I mean, I feel like you're going to put Boom high just because uh, then, although Boom is, oh, never mind. Uh, then Sonic 2. Then Sonic X. Oh, my God. So Sonic X is on the top. Yeah. A- I, anecdotally about uh, Sonic uh, Boom, apparently everyone who ever worked on that, like, so many people will come up to them and say, hey, did you know echidnas have four penises? That Like, <laughs> if you start to mention knuckles around them, they'll be like, yes, I know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, we tried to put it in episodes. Like, it wouldn't let us. Um... I, I think for my money, one of the, the best Sonic lore thing, I, not lore, the best Sonic shtick, mm-hmm. is just that once on that show, they, they call him Nipples the Echidna. And I just, in the back of my mind, that's... It's just the first thing I think about with him. I just picture the version where he's got spikes on his nipples and that's how he breaks through walls. And I think it's a better game. It's canon. It's my, it's my can- fan right. canon. I mean, Tyson's part of everything now, so I, I think it is essentially all canon. I like the buyer. Yeah, his, his father, Loke the Echidna. Right. Genetically engineered him to have powerful chaos nipples. Yeah. Uh, you like the buyer. Yeah, he's got a cool suit at the end. And, uh, you know, that guy's voice and face is scary so you know, yeah. i think he does a pretty good uh, job right so movies what is what is your what are your final thoughts on knuckles like how do you feel about knuckles and wade and them getting married i think the only thing this show is missing was pachacamac at the end <laughs> yeah they didn't bring him back feels because like he, yeah he he sets up the whole thing right he says train wade to be in a knuckles uh an echidna warrior right so he can ball but yeah. <laughs> he never comes back and like i think i really really think that pachacamac is really just trying to make knuckles be cool with living on earth i think that's his whole goal here is for him to establish a relationship with someone on earth and to learn about earth i think that's like why he's doing all this i don't think he actually wants knuckles to actually train wade but because he knows that knuckles is so obsessed with training that that's the only thing that he's going to attach to to begin with okay so right because now i'm visualizing like the near the end of episode six if in a a version where it's not not the little girl bowling with wade but it is knuckles right yeah and the two of them and then like there's a moment where pot where the spirit of pachakamak shows up and he's like smiling and yeah he's like you've done it and then knuckles is like but but what have I really done? He has just learned how to bowl. He does not know how to defend himself. And then Pachikamak turns and he's like, my boy, that's not what this was all about. Just like exactly. our ways was not necessarily the right ways. We killed off an entire <laughs> sentient species and they killed <laughs> us. It was mutually like we. Yes. And it and like, so that's where it all ties together. And then I guess you can have the buyer show up in a fight sequence. But even then, maybe you don't need it because you're focusing on the emotional core of Knuckles exactly. and Wade and, and his relationship with her. It's like, oh, wow. Oh, that would have been much better. Oh, OK. The show's bad again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a lot better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a very generous reading of all of the characters. Yeah. Otherwise, I love it. I think this is one of the best pieces of Sonic media out there, especially because it gets more people into Sonic. My my uh, fiance, she's totally not into Sonic, but she loved this. She ate it up. I think this is great. Yeah. I think this is a really special piece of media, and I think we need more of this. And I'm saying it unironically. I love this. This is great. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm glad it exists, and I like that it's weird Sonic. And yeah, and it's weird. Yeah, even if it's not everything that I necessarily wanted, or people who were like, I just needed a hardcore knuckle show, which I don't know. It was never going to be hardcore six episodes straight knuckles. I think those hardcore knuckles shows they. <laughs> Uh, are those mind. directed by axel Brom? <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> okay uh, all right and abby what, what are your final thoughts on knuckles the show the series one thing i am qualified to say is i really like 
I think the way Pachacamac looks is probably like my favorite way they've done the the CG oh, yeah. animals. Um, Maybe just because like because he's not the the merchandise character, they're sort of free to make him fun, <laughs> and and you don't have to be terrified of the fans <laughs> doing having any strong feelings about him. Like he he just mm. he's cute, he's delightful. He's Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, perfect. I I also just generally I love Pachacamac and Tikal. Like their designs are cool, all the lore, the existence of them, every version of them, a lot of fun. Love Tikal. Legally, I have to say that uh, we liked Knuckles' hat, <laughs> the cowboy hat. That's right. Dated yes, from yes. Jack the Bounty Hunter. That's the origin of the hat. If you watch, if you watch the Sonic OVA and wonder where did Knuckles get his hat. You might be a person who hasn't seen the Knuckles show on Paramount Plus. I like that that's a thing that sort of so many different comics and things noticed that there's this inexplicable hat in the OVA. And so they're like, and now here's an explanation. Oh, he he has it in a future Ken Penders timeline in the Archie comics or whatever. Like people want people love the hat so much that it's now got like three different canon versions. And I like that a lot. Yeah, it, it is a cool hat. It is. You just got to bring it back. Put it in the games. What, is, what is everyone it. here talking of Pachacamac? Kind of. Huh? What is everyone's opinion of Empress Knuckles in the French comic? What? Are we all familiar with this? Um, yeah. Uh, Adventures of, uh, I mean, Sonic Adventures. Le, le, uh, it's a French title. Le dans le robot nukiki. Yes. I am familiar yeah, yeah. with it. It, it is a. They just decided to give Knuckles a huge rack. As like the empress of these tribal echidnas that are chasing mm. Sonic all over the place. It was like, if I remember right, it like accompanied the Sonic 3 guide, but they didn't have too much information. Yeah. And so they're just like, oh, there's this red pink creature. <laughs> and so they made this red pink echidna ish creature, but she's got like a headdress. And yeah, I mean, I think she's meant to be separate because there is a, a Sonic and Knuckles guide they published, which does have just Knuckles in it. Like it's um, I've never it's tracked mostly that down. It's mostly a strategy guide, but there are a handful of like comic pages done by the same artist. That makes and Knuckles is there; he exists. Hey. Yeah. So, right. I forget what her. What do they call her? Anything in that, it's or is she just exists? Something. Yeah. I, I don't, don't know. know. Quick, quick, quick question. Got to check in on smoothies and and the uh, smoothies. Princess Elusion. Anger level. Oh, yeah. Smoothies. Okay. We're 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 way over time. We're way over time. Yeah, way uh, over time. We need to you... just get out. <laughs> We need to just get out at this point. Okay. Our producer, editor, and uh, chief, uh, our our Patrick (laughs) Right. Right. Although although he's younger than all of us. uh, So it's like a reverse Benjamin Button kind of thing. Sure. Uh, Yeah. So, Abby, thank you for being here. It's been a joy. Listeners. Look, we could talk more about Knuckles, but what more is there to say? You <laughs> hop into the comments, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it, it's not it's not the last word on Knuckles. It's our word. It's some <laughs> words. It's some words. They're good, they're good words. Yeah, you know, they came from you. They came from me. They came from all of us. Those smooth, smooth words. And how did you hear them all? It was because you listened to yet another episode of Sonic Weekly. Yes, that's right, Sonic Weekly, the only podcast that comes out once every seven days or so about Sonic. Uh, (laughs) If you enjoyed what you heard and you haven't already, of course, you can subscribe using your podcatcher of choice, being Apple Podcasts, uh, being Spotify, of course, Podcast Addict, the only open source podcatcher that we trust over here. Uh, Bo is, has a certified certificate on his wall that says, I love Podcast Addict. And if he was here, I'm sure he'd agree and not just laugh and pretend I'm going crazy. Hey, but if you don't trust any podcasters, we are also over on YouTube. It's at Sonic-Weekly. Don't forget the ad in the dash. And you can subscribe there. And it's got gameplay footage done by a friend of the show, Jack of Old Games. So you have something to look at while you're listening to our dulcet, dulcet tones. Uh, if you want to get a hold of the show, of course, we've got our email. It's sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. Send us a line. Let us know how you're enjoying the show. If you've got anything you want to say, maybe we'll read it on air. You can, you can write the words fit to print. We'll read it aloud. You know, we do have a Discord server. If you want to get in, you use that email. Ask for the link, and you'll be able to talk to some like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans. 
We technically have a Twitter at Sonic Weekly. Never use it. Don't worry about it. But it's still there. Pretend it pretend it works. Hey, and we got to thank, of course, Smoothies for joining us and also for editing this fine program of ours, making sure it comes out in a listenable and a pure, energetic, listenable state. Uh, got to thank once again, Abby, for stopping on by, for joining us, chatting some Sonic, chatting about other things that aren't Sonic because... Well, you know, it always comes back to Sonic. I look Please at life through a filter. Please look up my brother, the car on Hollywood Fringe. I'm so sorry. I didn't. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't know you were going into a bit. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's it, uh, yes. All of those. Uh, my brother, the car. All the links are in the description below. Look at that. You can find out where it's happening. Maybe you can go in person. Maybe you can just watch it online. Enjoy. Enjoy life in whatever way you can. Of course, if Bo was here, I'd thank him. But I will anyway. Thank you, Bo. And Grant, thank you for uh, leading us on this journey of Sonic the Hedgehog. Thank you, David.